we're with Cornwall City Councilor Morris Dupel, who is incensed, and I don't think I've ever seen you this angry about an issue at City Council. Oh, thanks, Jamie. I am frustrated. So, I'm for, very frustrated. For the average voter, the person that isn't a political junkie, what exactly has happened that's upset you? Um, well, we had a new camera meeting that was that city council asked for uh, regarding staffing levels and uh, you know going through our budget process and to which uh, positions were unionized and which positions were non-unionized and and uh, Jamie, that that report is definitely an in-camera an in-camera session okay. and we could, because we could be identifying somebody. Now, for people that don't know what it means to have an in-camera meeting, to your understanding, what exactly is an in-camera meeting? Uh, an in-camera meeting is if we're going to discuss uh, personnel issues, if we're going to discuss an um, identifiable individual that's an employee of the corporation of the city of Cornwall, if we're going to discuss a land transfer transaction, those are all valid in-camera meetings. And, and you're saying that at this particular meeting, and in this term, um, that issues were discussed that don't fall into that. Absolutely. Now, the past council, which was your first term, had a number of issues about improper in-camera meetings that, that culminated with the, the committee, the Waterfront Committee meetings when Mr. Fournier had to come in and tell some very senior elected officials that, you know, they broke the rules. What happens in a situation like this? Are you going to take it to the closed meeting investigator or uh, at that point I'm, I, at this point I'm contemplating whether or not I'm going to uh, uh, pursue this as a, as a, as a complaint are, are you I, uh, I asked for clarification uh, on Monday night when I got home from my meeting through an email to the city clerk and to normal back and as of uh, today being Wednesday at 3 o'clock I had yet to have a response from them uh, with all due respect, I did have a response to my emails from the budget chair, the budget uh, uh, committee, uh, committee chair, uh, Councillor Bernadette Clemma. I had a, a phone call from her, and I had a, uh, a, a phone call from her and an email. Was she speaking on behalf of the clerk and the CAO? No, she was speaking as chair. Right. And did she did she give you comfort, or, or were her answers? your needs? Um, no, because I actually wasn't looking for a response from her uh, as chair of the committee. I was looking for a response from the CAO and the city clerk for our administration. Uh, Councillor Clemmer is a colleague. This is a question I've asked a few other councillors today. If you guys discuss information in an in-camera meeting that doesn't fall under in-camera, are you still allowed to talk about it? Is this a form of, of muzzling discussion about certain subjects by bringing them into an in-camera meeting? Yeah, and that's a really good question, Jamie. I, uh, I have to tell you that's an excellent question, and I would need to speak to somebody who has that knowledge uh, because uh, the sensitivity around in-camera meetings, uh, as you know, is very sensitive. So I would, I would comment after I had some uh, advice on that. Now, you, you shared that you campaigned on transparency and account accountability, especially after the Kilger scandals. Uh, Mayor O'Shaughnessy seemed to be, that seemed to be his only tentpole during the election. Um, he's been silent in this, in this mess. Has he said anything to you or commented? Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, I had a meeting this afternoon with him. Um, I can't speak for uh, Mayor O'Shaughnessy, but uh, I have voiced my concerns with him, and uh, I'm going to uh, leave it at that. So what what do you think at the end of the day will happen after this? Will, will council change? Because last term, they seemed to just go and shrug every time they got nailed for this sort of thing. Well, you know what, Jamie, as a city councillor, I'm going into I'm in my fifth year on city council, and I feel that I am a councillor that brings some passion to the table, and I represent the residents to the best of my ability, and I always respond to my residents, and for me, at the end of the day, when I send out a sincere email to administration, to our CEO, to the clerk, uh, I expect a, re a response, and I expect that not to be... Uh, any great big uh, thing or um, 
for it not to be uh, something that's going to take a long time to happen. I just, I think it's common courtesy and it's respect. Well, and respect runs both ways. See, now I don't feel so bad because it's very rare that I ever get a, a response timely or otherwise from the CAO. So um, I feel like I'm in good company. Let, let's switch gears for a second. The big focus is, of course, the budget and taxes. Many, many of those on council signed the petition by signed the uh, campaign from the community action group to freeze taxes. Um, you know, we've had Elaine McDonald float a boat about having a 10% tax increase over four years, which was shot down. I think you guys are down to, what, 3.8% that you're looking at raising taxes? 5.5. 5.5. How, how do you reconcile that as a counselor? What do you tell to the people that supported you? I tell the people that here we are faced with the decision of 10 elected officials plus the mayor. We need to make a decision. This is simple math. Simple math, and I can't, it can't get any more simple. Either we're going to deliver a 5.5 tax increase to the residents of Cornwall, which I am not in favor of, or we're going to look at ways to reduce the expenses. The only way that we can reduce that 5.5% is reduce our expenses. And unless we're ready and prepared to do that, we can't be sitting on the fence, Jimmy. We can't say, I don't want to reduce services or I don't want to reduce uh, expenses. You know, there's a difference between cutting cutting back and working more efficient. And I think that there's room for us to work more efficient. So let me and ask let, 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 let me ask you a, a tough question, which is if you forget about the fact that you have to have the support of council, if you could wave your magic wand, what would you do or recommend to get taxes down to, to zero? I think I would. I, I think we need a long plan, but for this year, I would look at, at the way we do business. And I think that the first thing where we're going wrong is that city council is not seeing department audits on a regular basis. And we need to do department audits to know if, if what we have in that department is still necessary. Maybe it was necessary last year or four years ago, but maybe it's redundant now. Is there anything maybe that... We need to look at, maybe we need to look at positions within the city and by attrition. When some, when some positions retire from the city, maybe that position is no longer needed. Would, would you, tough, 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 tough decisions to make, but I, I know that the residents of Cornwall elect us to go in there and make those tough decisions. Would, would you support a job freeze or job cuts even? I would support a job freeze, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it should be very interesting to see how, how the budget talks heat up because, frankly, you know, we outside of City Hall in the media and in the public are not seeing a lot of movement. Even the meeting that was in camera that you're saying had a big chunk of the information discussed not be in camera didn't last that long overall. You know, we've had, we've had viewers say, well, what the heck did they do in there if it wasn't related to in-camera issues? Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. Do you think that, that there's real support at your table to, to keep taxes as close to a 0% raise as, as possible? I think there's quite a few people who are there that would like to see that happen. I think that there's some people around the table who believe unless we are increasing taxes at a, fair, at a, a reasonable and now, year after year, that there's no room for growth in our city, I disagree with that. I think we need to be focusing more on increasing our tax base, bringing new residents to Cornwall, bringing new developments to Cornwall, which will all eventually, in a long-term plan, reduce the taxes that our residents have to pay. For sure. I mean, we've seen enough empty storefronts on Pitt and 2nd Street, and have you have you heard about the fact that there was supposed to be a business incubator in Cornwall, Ontario, and it was killed off? No, I did not. All right, we'll we'll be writing about that eventually. But uh, okay. we've got to do something for small business anyway, sir. I should let you go. It's I know it's uh, after work hours. That's fine. It's my pleasure.